a lot of you, of course, know the story about uh, Nogier finding the first point. Paul Nogier was a little distressed because he realized that the Chinese had developed this map and there were some points that didn't really match what he was finding. Him and his colleagues mapped what became known as the inverted fetus. When Dr. Nogier went to present this at a conference, there were representatives from the Chinese army interested in finding out whether some Western pieces of medicine could fit into what they were doing, right? So they came back with this information of this map. That map then went into the teachings. And that's how we now kind of know it as, as the, the, the Chinese ear map that's usually taught in TCM schools. The heart point in the Chinese map, for example, is in the concha. And the heart, the heart point in the, the European map is on the, is on the scaffa up here. So there were a few examples of that and he really wanted to figure out why it was that there was a difference. Was he wrong? Were they wrong? Or perhaps another explanation. When Dr. Barr was thinking about this, one thing that he thought was that, okay, we need to find what's going on in that concha point for the heart, okay? And what they discovered was the cardiac plexus. It makes sense that you have two points that affect the same organ because you have the neurological aspect and you have the physiological muscle of the, of the organ itself. As something becomes more chronic, there's more central nervous system involvement. Like if I have a shoulder point that is, uh, that is a problem and it goes on and up long enough, it's gonna start affecting the central nervous system that's related to that shoulder, okay? So of course you're gonna find a, a central nervous system point related to the shoulder that's gonna help the shoulder in a more chronic situation. If you get even more chronic, okay, then you start getting into the emotional side of things. And then you find the shoulder point down in, in this area of the ear, which is where the pain memory points are. When neurons fire together, they wire together, and they're more likely to fire again, so they become almost trigger happy, and they start to bond together, and they habitually fire. And so now there's a pain memory point for the shoulder, which only happens, you can only have a pain memory point for the shoulder if you have a very old chronic shoulder trauma. This is the work that Dr. Barr did specifically to try to explain why people are finding different points for the same thing. 